Hey guys, welcome back. What you're looking at here is the Singer 201 and the Singer 15-91. Now the 201 is a 1957 model that I have and uh, I'm going to put these two machines up against each other because they look very similar and uh, they both have the potted motor. They don't have an external motor with a belt. Uh, they have this potted motor version so they both look very close to being the same machine as obviously you can see the 201 has the light in the front um, there is also a 201 model that does not have this light in the front okay guys so keep that in mind there's a 201 that looks very similar to the 1591 um, I'll spin these machines around and show you the differences of the the two machines and explain what's the major difference uh, right now the 201 is a rotary machine and the 1591 is an oscillating okay so you got an oscillating hook on that one and a complete rotary hook on the 201 all right so uh we'll uh, get these machines spun around and we'll take a look at the face plates you guys have already looked at the 1591 in pe previous video but i'm going to show you the difference with a uh, 201 you can obviously see some of the differences here already but uh let's start at the face plate like i do and work my way around the two machines all right guys so give me one second here we are at the front of the machines and you've seen the video with the 1591 and there's a lot going on on the 1591 you got your thread guide and your upper tensions there and you got another thread guide over here and you got your take up lever coming through so there's a lot going on on a 1591 but when you look over to 201 there's only one thread guide right here okay this Face plate's one piece, nice and round, goes flat and then rounds around again. It's then, uh, bent over down here with a nice flat spot for the guide to go into this guide. All right, so there's the difference of the two plates, okay? Uh, they're both low shank uh, presser foot machines, right? So that's the same on the machines. You can see that there's a quite a bit of difference in height on this than there is on this one. Um, also they both thread the same as in they go from the inside out okay you can see there's a thread guide here it's on the side so it could get confusing they actually have it on the back of the 15 class but on the 201 it's right here and uh, but it does thread from the back uh, side of this hook or uh, needle towards the towards us here so there you go there's the two face plates let's uh, flip over to the back side of these machines all right guys here we are at the back of the machines and uh you can see the obvious difference right away there is no light on the back of a 201 and uh but the main reason i'm putting them together is because the potted motors okay both of these assemblies are uh worm gear direct drive systems they don't have belts or anything they have brushes uh you can change through caps at the top and the bottom here they have grease ports on them as well but there is a difference between the two and it's the bobbin winders okay so when you look at them they look the same uh, but they could be different so don't I don't know if they're interchangeable or not I'm pretty sure you could change the covers and the motors and the brushes and maybe bobbin wheels and stop motion knobs maybe even the hand wheel but don't quote me on any of that because I have not taken these two apart to compare them I do know that these two covers on the machines are the same size and are interchangeable. I could put this nice fancy one on the 201 if I wanted. So um, that's one thing that is the same. But uh, that's the reason they're going against each other. They're both potted motors uh, versions. So I'm going to put the rotary against the oscillating hook. And uh, we know that the 1591 beat the 115. Let's see if it can beat the 201. All right. So uh, let me get these machines spun around and we'll talk about the front and uh, get on to the sew-off. Alright, so here we're looking at the 201 at the front. The 1591 uh, you guys have seen in a past video, so I'm not going to go over that too much. But with the 201, um, you can obviously see this one has the light in the front. Now, the, between the two versions, if you're going to get the one with the, the light in the front, get an LED bulb for this okay I'm just gonna say this right away because if you don't this gets very hot and you can burn your arm very easily on that being in the front of the machine okay so uh, yes you can get them for the other machines as well but 
definitely change it out on the um, 201, all right? Just going to give the, you guys a heads up on that right away. Because uh, I got bit by this light once already. So just let you guys know. Um, you can see that the 201 threads in the front. And what nice, it's nice. It has the uh, adjustment knob and everything for the upper thread tension right in front of you. Unlike the uh, 15 class where it's in the face plate, you know, you can see it right here. Uh, everything threads right here through the front, nice and easy. So that's other, another bonus with the uh, 201. But if you look at it all, you can see that the uh, bobbin winder is in the same place as the 1591. But they are different because remember, this is 66 class. So uh, this part here is narrower than on the uh, 15. Okay, so the bobbin winders are different. The casting looks the same on the body of the um, potted motor. But don't quote me on that. So I'm not sure if you can just change the bobbin winder and the little uh, foot here um, and use the other one. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, you can look up other videos for that. I, I won't be getting into that. But anyways, there you go. You look at the front of the machines. They look similar. They both have that forward reverse stitch length. And that's all they do. They don't do anything fancy. No zigzag or anything. So uh, they're just potted motor. One's rotary. One's oscillating. So let's see uh, these machines in action. And I'll let you know if I could only keep one, what one would I keep? Alright, so uh, I'll be right back. Alright guys, to uh, thread the 201, you first start with your first guide is right up here. And then you'll wrap around your tensioner uh, in a clockwise manner. And you want to go up and hook on to this hook here. Now you'll automatically go into the spring and uh, it'll push the spring up. But make sure you hook on to that little hook there. Alright. And uh, now that you're under your spring, you will come up, go into your upper uh, take up lever here. And you'll come down to your first guide. And then your second guide. And then into your needle. Alright. See if I can do this. There we go. And, uh, and there you go. So that's how you thread your 201. One guide around under the spring which hooks onto the hook here into the take up lever. One guide here, second guide at the needle clamp and then from inside out. All right. And then uh, when it comes to the bobbin, same thing, one rotation down, pull this up, grab a hold of your bobbin thread there. Now with the uh, bobbin on these, um, you just drop the bobbin in and you grab the thread and there's a little slice in the uh, little slit in the uh, body of the bobbin case there that's stationary. So you grab the thread and you hook it into that and you pull the thread until it clicks into here and then it will come straight across. So then you just close your cover. The cover on a 201 has a little slit where you can leave the thread hanging out. And then when you do that rotation, it'll automatically pick up the, uh, the thread for you. It's very standard. They still use this system a lot on the newer machines, I noticed. Um, with the plastic drop-in bobbins, this system seems to be quite popular in today's machines. So uh, it's one of the reasons why this machine is a good machine to, to have. If, if you come across a 201, um, grab one up. You'll really, really enjoy the way it stitches. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys that uh, here in a second. So uh, just let me get the camera and that set up a little bit better. Just wanted to show you how it was threaded. And then uh, I'll show you a stitch. Okay, guys. Let's, uh, let's run a stitch on the 201. Let's get that thread down into there. And uh, if you ever get a chance to pick up a 201... Slow it down there. If you ever get a chance to get a 201, pick one up. You're going to like them. They're pretty smooth machines. The rotary machines work very well, obviously. If they didn't, uh, they wouldn't still use that same design today. A lot of the modern machines I notice are class 66 bobbins, so obviously they did something right. And uh, as you can see, the machine's not moving around at all. 
very stable it's not even in a base or anything there's no bounce or anything on the, the table when I use it it's one of the things I like about it and it's very quiet very smooth feeling but uh, besides that the stitch on a 201 is very very nice it's very straight very nice very even you can see there's the uh, black thread on the bottom I got there and uh, white on the top so there you go so that's the 201 running a stitch um, let's get the 15 over here you guys have seen it work but I gotta run a stitch right beside this one so we compare the two uh, but there's the 201 guys okay let's get the uh, 15 running a stitch here and uh, we can compare the two. Put down in there. Now remember the uh, 1591 here, it did beat the 115. Now the uh, one thing that this machine had advantage over the 115 is that reverse. Okay, well that 201, it has reverse. So now it's a fair fight, isn't it? So uh, let's take a look at the stitch on the 15. Now I did uh, red thread on the upper and the lower. Um, so you don't really can't see the balance, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. It's 1591. It's got a good stitch on it. Uh, looks all good to me here. I don't know. What do you think? All right, guys, let me uh, get the 201 put beside the 15 here so we can decide which one I would keep if I could only keep one. Okay, guys, so here we are. Just to let you know, the 1591 has lost the round. Okay, the 201 would be the one that I would keep. If I only had these two machines... And uh, I can only keep one. The 201 would be the one I keep. You've seen the stitch the machine runs. It's very quiet, very smooth. Uh, I like the fact that uh, I can put it just on a regular table and I don't have to worry about it bouncing around when I'm running it. It's also a very controllable machine, uh, speed-wise. Like if you want to slow down the stitch and bring the stitch up, it seems to be more controllable than the 15 class, okay? Um, the 15 is a great machine, don't get me wrong. You get a hold of one of these, uh, these come on the market quite often, not that expensive, and they're great machines. So if you get one, it'll do tons of work. You can go through eight layers of denim, no problem. But the quality of stitch from the 201, I would have to say, is superior to the 15. So that's my choice, guys. The uh, 201 has won this round. So the rotor rotary uh, machines have made a comeback. The 115 got beat out by this... Um, oscillating hook 1591 now the 201 rotary just took down that so there you go guys there's my pick the 201 hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, stay tuned I got more coming up and uh, now that the 15 got beat out we'll have to see who the next contender is come up against this 201 because uh, whoever is gonna move forward you gotta see who's gonna make it to the end Right. Okay guys, stay tuned and stay safe.